Hello everyone, today's video is going to be day 7 in our Skate from Tarkov Standard Edition playthrough. Now before we get started, just a reminder that this series is live stream, so if you want to catch those live streams, make sure you hit that bell button so you get notified of when that happens. Also, if you're looking for the full unedited VODs, check out that blue join membership button down below because sergeants and above have access to those. But finally, today's video's theme is going to be how to control firefights using range control. Basically, the weapons that you go in with really define your engagement range and how you should be playing the map. And if you take the time to analyze your surroundings and really use it to your advantage, you can come out ahead in a lot of situations. But as always, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And let's get right into the first raid. Yeah, playing interchange solo is very difficult. Could also be in Rasmussen, all that gunfighting. It's gonna keep chugging right here. You really wanna be careful of the back wall if you don't get to it first. Because if someone gets priority back there. You... It's a scav I can't see. Lovely. Check your armor if you get tagged by a scab. You never know if we zeroed something. So we don't want to sit here. I'm going to sprint it to this side. See if we can just clap the scab real fast. I got to worry about this fight happening. It might be happening downstairs. He's dead. M80 hurts, dude. Yeah, he was wearing a rice farmer helmet, so he's medium kit. Just gonna clear my back as I am making noise, and there's a lot of potential spots here for players. I'm betting there's at least one player somewhere in this Ollie area. So I do have to be careful. We're gonna get a quest item and then push through them all. Every time I stop like that and I take a knee, I'm, I'm basically trying to hear things. You gotta do it fast though, because I've gotten killed a couple times. I take a knee in the middle of the open to hear something. It's a good spot because you can see all um, Kiba, which is a high loot spot. Pits right below you, generics on the right, you got Adik on the left. This is a high traffic zone that you can't tell if that's at me. Holy shit. I don't think that's at me, though. There's a body down there we can watch in camp. Okay. I think there's someone below me in Ras. I think I saw bullets hit the top here, so the guy that's shooting is probably below me. Shooting this direction, so I'm probably, like, right above him-ish. Now, shooting through glass on this map is always such a 50-50, dude. I'm moving around so I don't get headshot. Thing is, if they send someone up to the third floor, I'm kind of fucked. There's way too ma many angles for me to watch. So right now, I'm just giving up security for better visibility. Because it looks like I'm going to scope in here. The only, the only reason why I'm not scoping in is because it's going to make sound. I'm trying to see if that guy has stuff or if he's been looted already. Doesn't look like he's been looted. It looks like a player body. So Rash is a really hot spot. There's also a cheeky spot right here. Players like to jump up onto. Because they can see over the tarp and watch Kiba. It's too dark for me to go for a peek there. He'll see me before I see him. Because my back will be sky uh, will be a skyline slash silhouetted against the back. So there's no real good... Fucking... See, that's what I'm talking about. This fucking... Of course. Oh my god. The fucking glass is just... Oh, oh, I hate it, dude. I hate it.
So that was a really rough first PMC raid to go through. I just really hate the glass on interchange. Some of it you can shoot through, some of it you can't. It's just so unreliable, and I never trust the glass, and it's just always gotten me killed. So I've learned my lesson. I'm going to try not to shoot through the glass anymore. That time I did hit the railing because I was trying to get that peak on top of the glass because I'm just so paranoid about shooting through it, uh, and it, did, it didn't work out for us. But we're rolling into the next interchange raid, and this one does get really spicy. And I think there's a lot that you can learn from this next raid. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. You need to heal when you, you you have to heal your PMC. I don't think it's a good idea to go into a PM, uh, PMC raid with an unfull healed PMC. Okay, we got that lucky loot spawn. So in our position, we are going to loot this stuff. Not bad. Some good loot. So we're essentially just gonna sweep the underground a couple times, get some loot, and then uh, start bankrolling some of these quests. Careful of scavs down here. Playing downstairs also works to our advantage because there's not too many stores and stuff. There's some cars and crates, but our range will will help us here more than like the CQB slash medium range stuff that happening that is gonna happen if we fight in the mall. So flying down here with a Mosin is okay. Last thing you want to be doing is pushing stores with a Mosin, because then you run into real problems. Oh, someone killed a scab down here. We might start playing on reserve just to mix things up. Kind of getting tired of uh, interchanging customs. Reserve is also a good loot. The only thing is that on res... I don't know if he saw me. He might have seen me. Fuck. Pretty sure he saw me. I'm back into a corner here. When I op move back, so I open up my options. I think he just saw him going to the tent. Gonna oh fuck, I can't even. I'm gonna flank him hard. Oh shit, I'm getting shot in the back. <sighs> He's got me dead to rights if he peeks now. <sighs> I want to stop the bleeding before I move any further. Get as much information as I can while I heal. <coughs> it's trapped in that corner, so as long as I walk back or get, get out of here with something between me and him, she'd be able to play a longer angle. I want to create distance because of the weapon matchup. That's 100% the right place. Make distance. So this should be a significant amount of distance. I don't know if I dropped him right there. I don't think I did. Uh, so he's if he's still alive, he's behind that crate. So we'll play the waiting game. If he doesn't peek out, we might have snapped him. I don't think we did, though. That, it didn't look like a clean shot on my end. So odds are he's still back there. I got to worry about the guy further, even further back behind us. But yeah, make sure you play ranges according to your weapon type. Right, the last thing I want to do is push this guy with the Mosin. You've seen me when I play with an, uh, an MP5, like I'll rush. Just be cognizant of what they're using. It's definitely a PMC. You can try to get some information while you're medding. multitask as much as possible i'm watching in the right corner of the bus in case that other guy comes around we're fucked if that guy that we fought first comes around our back through the open and does a wide flank 
I really can't tell. Did we drop this guy? Is that his fucking body right there? Did we, we fucking snapped him? Holy shit. Once again, just gonna pie it wide. I wanna play that range. Oh, I see. I see something right there. I saw something move underneath here. It could have been a visual glitch. Nope. Not a visual glitch. So we're going to play it. Try to narrow this angle in case he peeks it. Yep, there you peeked it. He did a fast peek. I talk about that a lot where, where they just come out and come back in. So now I'm watching to see if he punches out to the right again. I want to keep my crosshair properly centered. On the right footsteps. To scab, I'm gonna let him do his thing. Sounds like two suppressed gun and then a normal gun. We're gonna chance it because we have a Mosin. I want him to slow peek the corner, which he might do now. We've got paint. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my life. I need to split my leg. Another pain kill for temporary. He's prone. We might have a shot here. And that's why you don't prone out against a sniper. That is 100% why you don't prone out against a sniper. So we still got one up over there. We're going to take the time to splint. The other players shouldn't be getting too aggressive right now because his friend just died. If he's really good and really confident, he will. But I'm betting that he isn't. Mainly because they made that new mistake of proning out. So I'm guessing they're not experienced players. You never want to prone out against a sniper because if he sneak uh, sneak peeks, all he's got is your head and you can't move because you're proned out. We're gonna swip, uh, swap it up and move far left. Try to get a wide angle on the right. Play that range. Fuck. The only thing is we had to drop angle. And so his friend could have punched out, flanked around us, done a whole bunch of crazy shit. Our best option right now is to kind of reset while maintaining his ma many eyes as much. I hear something shuffling, but it could be above me. Can... I think it's, it's above me. It's a scab above me. So the really big play here for the other guy is to... That's the scab they dropped. Is to push all the way around the outside and come around behind me. He might do that, but he might not. My immediate goal is to get to the first guy that I dropped because he's a separate party. See what kind of gun he has and hopefully he has something that's at least semi-automatic. Someone said it in my chat, like, really early on. L losing eyes on a player is like losing eyes on a gigantic fucking spider that's in your house. One confirmed down. That other guy punched out to the right. The only thing is he... I don't know if he went around. Or if he doubled back. Or if he's... He could be just sitting in a... Behind this thing, like, corner camping. But the way that there's no cover there leads me to believe he might have just doubled back. But he, he also could have gone up the escalators over there. Like over here. If I was him, I would have punched all the way outside. And would be looking to come in from behind right there. There's also a really small chance that he's on my left. Along this wall. And he moved while I was killing the other guy. He's still up 100%. I get this guy's stuff first. Okay, this guy's got a terrible looking fucking ADAR, but hey, we'll take it. Please tell me it's loaded with something that isn't garbage. Okay, we're gonna do a rig swap because this one has more armor. 
search his pockets for meds because we will need more meds. Oh, he's got nades. This is great. Oh, he's got a lot of nades too. I love you. We really shouldn't be going through the bag right now because it's not necessary. But who knows what he has in here. I don't have much to lose. Oh, he's got another thermometer. Okay. Need to check what this guy's ADAR is loaded with. Trash ammo. <laughs> Great. So we're only using that in case of emergency. This guy could be anywhere right now. The good news is that, as far as he's concerned, I could be anywhere as well. I have slight advantage because I have eyes on the body. I just really don't know where his friend went. There's no way I push this close corner. That That's not an option. So I either hold this angle or I loop back around and, and take my time and try to get a wide peak, a wide angle peak around the left corner. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to double back so we get out of range, out of sight. And my goal is to see behind this corner because there's no way we push. We know for sure. We saw two. There's no way in hell that we, uh, that we push that close corner. So we're going to loop back around see if we can get better eyes. I want to be careful as I do. So he did what I thought he would do. Just see if I can make him squirm. I don't know where he's at entirely. Well, aim of these nades is to figure out where he's at. He sprinted up on me, so I got to create distance again. Double back. I know where he is now. Want more distance. Want more distance. There's no way I take an AK fight close. So I know he's near that bus. Fish. He's doubled back over to the left side. We have range advantage here. Odds are he comes along the left wall. I would say he might sneak along the left. Oh, no, we got him now. We got him now. I'm trying to figure out if I want to go left or right. I could sit behind this car. This is not a bad idea. Can I shoot under it? Oh, okay. All right. This is this is the best play. Now we have him dead to rights unless he doubles out back to right again. But we should see him through this gap right here in between the crate and the tent. So now we just wait. Oh, there he goes. And boom. We got him. Okay. So he did exactly what I would have done, which is come around the back. So good fight by these two guys. <clears throat> we used that nades, those nades to put up a wall because I was scared he was going to push me. We're going to heal up and then loot these guys. All right. Uh, we do need a drink. Do I have any water? Fuck. So we need to hope that these guys have food and water on them because my stomach got zeroed. If he has water, it's gonna be in his bag. This guy looks like he has big shit. He's got water. Cool. Dope. So that was a really good fight. I re that was a really, really good fight. Uh, we're gonna drop all this sh stupid shit. Need that splint. Need these PKs. Yeah. 
Uh, we're gonna pull all this stuff in the tricep because this is actually bigger. I wanna hurry because we did make some noise. I'm not too worried because it is late in the raid, but... Oh, I had milk. We could have drank the milk instead. You lock, definitely. He's got a trooper on, which we're gonna take instead of the Zuck. I mean, we just dookied on these dudes with a Mosin, which is why the Mosin is one of the best guns in the game. Hey, Cave, thanks for the 10 bucks. Yeah, it was a really good fight. It was a really good fight by these two guys. Forty-two, holy shit. <clears throat> Why are you running? Oh, he's doing his respirator quest? Yeah, he's doing his respirator quest. He's loaded with. BP, I'll take BP. I'm gonna drop these Stan Egg mags because they're loaded with garbage. Bank robber. Um, question is, do we drop the Mosin? I think we drop the Mosin, hope we get it back in insurance. And take up the AKs. I think that's the right play. <clears throat> okay. Uh. I kind of don't want to leave this right here. Fuck. Alright, whatever. We should get the Mosin back in insurance. Unless someone's, like, really paying attention to the loot. We should get it back in insurance. So now we're gonna push out. <clears throat> that was a pretty intense fight. I had to use my brain uh, <laughs> pretty intensively there. We got a really nice lucky shot on that first, dude. <sighs> we're just gonna hug the wall and use this small berm to get in between us. Gotta be careful with snipers across right here. I wanna watch my stam. Don't walk in a straight line. Quickly scan. It looks pretty clear here. I'm gonna switch to full auto as we push the tents. Watching my stam still. Stam management, incredibly important right here. I want to have some in case I get shot at. But I also don't want to be walking slowly in the open. Just stutter step it. Careful here. Looks okay. Alright, if he hasn't poked out to shoot at us by now, I don't think there's anyone in there. And we're out. Alright. All right. So that was a really, 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 really good good raid. We had some really nice fights there. Um, or I guess it was just one really long fight. But we played it right. You can see, like, managing range control on the weapon types is incredibly important. We use nades to create distance and to push them back, right? Setting up that wall, that nade wall, incredibly important was as well. <laughs> 26 right in the thorax, 30 right in the head. And a 42 in the thorax. Mosin was 7 and 1. Will slap people like no other. Um, even uh, LPS GZH is also a really good Mosin round. So Mosins are incredibly deadly. But they do require a little bit more skill to use. Because they are bolt action. Versus the Vepper Hunter which is semi-automatic. And does almost as much damage. So really good shots there. Really proud of that raid actually. Like really happy with how that one came out. So after getting out of that last raid a little bit too cocky, we headed back into Interchange where we did get our Karma back. There's someone looting the, the duffel bag there. I know exactly where he is. So he's on the other side of the wall looting a duffel bag. You shouldn't be able to hear me if I slow walk. I mean, he might if he's really, really paying attention. There's a duffel bag up here that I'm, I'm pretty sure he's at. <laughs> Fuck! He heard me. So yeah, he was paying attention. After getting slapped pretty hard right there, I decided to switch it up and do my factory quest. Okay. We kind of spawned... Okay. Um. Yeah, we're not going this way. Turn full auto. Now, personally, just on principle, I don't like going for run-throughs. So we're going to try to get enough XP to not get a run-through. Of course, if you're, if you're like, real ratting it, you can just extract now. But...
He's underneath. Holy stutter. happened down here dude holy shit what were you guys all doing you guys are fucking animals I'm trying to do your pistol quest or something You're savages all right <sighs> boom quest done quest complete after completing our postman quest, we decided to use the MP5 we used on factory in customs and try to get out with another dorms quest. Dorms. I'm just going to go straight up to second. Our biggest threat right now is going to be scab boss if he's in here, in which case we're going to get fucked because we are not equipped to deal with scab boss. So just double check and we're on the right. Dang. They've been putting like normal scabs in this room or the, in this building, so you do have to be careful. We do have our quest right here. We're just gonna get our quest, get out of dorms. The longer we stay in the dorms, the, the higher our chances are of fucking getting waxed. So we're just gonna zip on out of here, brother. And we'll pick up some scab kills or fight somewhere else. Oh my God, he had armor. We hit him a fuck ton of times. He's just wearing armor. And of course, if you run into a big dude with an MP5, that usually doesn't bode well for you. So we jump back into customs, and if you're ever looking for a good example of when to break out from a fight or when to disengage, this was a pretty darn good clip of it. Someone's in here. I definitely heard broken lights, which means that someone threw a nade in dorms. Which means we want to get the fuck out of here right quick. Honestly, the best way to play with friends is to get them all up to some, like, equal level of competency and then jump in a raid together. Because playing with more friends in this game doesn't make things easier, it makes them harder. Because now you have to worry about not shooting someone. Whereas when you're playing solo, you shoot whatever. But if you're playing with, with friends, you, you're, you're actively worrying about not shooting something. <laughs> Which gets tons of people killed. I think there's someone on a brick. I need to get down. I need to throw this frag. Without lagging, I need to get up. And I need to fucking pop a pain and get around the corner. Pain before meds just because I need speed. There's a scab back here. I might die to the fucking scab. Now you stop the bleeding. If he pushes me, I'm fucked. He's got a pilgrim, which makes me believe he's like medium to high kit. He's also wearing a face shield, I think I saw. So right now, I really need to reset this fight. I'm gonna hug here because I doubt he's gonna push the right corner because he'd have to push along the open wall. But if he hears me betting, I'm dead. I really need to fix some of this shit. This is not shit I can just get away with not fixing. One thing I do want to do is make sure that I'm healing my thorax. Thorax is... Important. If thorax gets zeroed by bullet damage, you're dead. So sometimes you have to manually heal, thor heal thorax. Can't tell if I reloaded. I did. So I'm making a bet that he doesn't come around the right because it's way too fucking exposed. You'd have to be real big dick if you come around the right. I should have, I fucked up here, I should have manually made it go to my leg, because it might repair my arm, in which case, that doesn't really help, I need to be able to walk. But we're taking a risk here. I'm pretty sure he's not going to push me. There's too much brush. Yeah, see, I fucked up there. I should have done that. That's what I should have done. Usually when you're using CMSs, you want to do it manually, because you can't afford to have it go to the wrong limb.
All right, so the thought process behind, behind him not pushing me is I fell back. And uh, there's too much brush. So if I fall back through brush, it's like popping a smoke screen, right? If I sit on the other end of the brush, he's not going to see anything coming through it. So it's it's very... It, it dissuades him from, from trying to push. The right is also hella open, so I don't think he'd do that. The only thing is now I'm trapped, right? I think we just chill and reset this as much as possible and heal up. There's no rush for me to move right now. Because I'm trapped, more or less. Honestly, sometimes the best option you have during a raid is other players, like a third party, coming to fuck up a fight. Sometimes that'll save you. I'm trying to figure out my game plan here. It's a 50-50 if he's watching that far corner or this close corner. I'm going to 50-50 it. I'm going to fast peek the side here. Okay. I'm going to get across the road. This is an okay position. It's not the best. Once again, I'm kind of trapped. But we got out of the, the main danger area. If he's really going to push us, we'll hear him running across the road. Or coming through this thing. So we're safe, but trapped. That's how I'd put it. I'm trying to see if I can get a cheeky side peek. But this guy's had a lot of time to move. So best option for me is probably just to run. There's a random chance that I killed him with that frag. It did look like a good frag. I think we take the fast but risky route and just skirt out behind him. Like this. Don't go over the bridge. We're going around. We can check. Holy shit. We can check it from the other angle once we get kind of safe out here. And we want to go wide around all this. We'll check it. We'll see the fight and see if we can do anything with it. Holy shit, this guy. Eight rounds. All right, we found him. This dude ran, dude. This guy, I, I kept on hearing him in the brush, but like I really didn't want to push in there because he could be just sitting in a bush camping it. I don't know. Like we zeroed out this dude's armor. Holy shit! I really like. I was so confused during that entire fight. So apologies if there was not much commentary. But I heard him metting there. I threw the frag. It's just. I don't know what happened there. Mulatto here because it's going to be CQB if there's an ex extra camper. Door's closed, which means it could be fine. But, fuck, dude. If there's an exit camper, he's usually sitting behind the barrels. So just be ready to pre-fire that or fire on that when you peek the corner. Alright, we're out. Oh. Good raid. I wonder if we killed that other guy. We'll find out here if we did. But... Going hunting through the bushes like that in the low ground is, is not usually a good idea. Like trying to push through there and find someone. Because if you hit a bush, he's going to kill you. He's going to see movement better than you do. 
people sitting in bushes in dense forests have advantage on you because like you make so much noise and coming through there and they're sitting in a bush like it's not a good fight to push them so we didn't he, he probably ducked out and doubled back as well because we put some some equal shots into uh into him yeah we hit him for a lot he, he took a lot of damage a lot of damage good fight good raid got out alive you don't have to chase down every fight that's a great example right there is that like you don't have to continue that fight if it's a bad fight for you just dip just go you don't need to engage and challenge everything. You get killed a lot doing that. But after getting out of a pretty sticky situation, we managed to get out alive, dropped another player who was reloading, and so I'll call that a win any day. Just remember, you can always reset the fight, or you know, sometimes running away is the best way to survive. But now we're going to hop in on Shoreline for a couple of quests, and these are the first couple of Shoreline raids that I've ever done on this account. So it's going to be a little interesting because it's been a long time since I played this map and we get into a really weird situation rip my dude he looked like he was solo i'm gonna do a wide sweep just in case but he had a really slow reaction dude i put like two three rounds into him and he didn't move or he didn't even wiggle at all Usually, the second you shoot at someone, they, they fucking spaz, dude. But this guy just kept on walking in a straight line. Watch our stam in case we do get into a fight. I'm going to push past and clear the body. Get eyes on the low ground. Sweep it completely. What I'm doing right now is trying to set up like, like a little bubble of clearance. So that I have like that much time to loot the body before someone runs up on me. Alright. What are you doing? What the fuck are you bringing this in here for? You're insane, my dude. Holy shit. I'm not putting this on. I don't know if that's important either. There's so many new items. This man is crazy, dude. It's not worth much. Not worth much. He, he didn't even bring in any extra... Magazines and he's level what 25 What the fuck I I don't know what that guy's up to Gonna see if I can see anything on uh, a uh, power station from this side. Oh, there he is. <sighs> He's really gonna make me go down there for him, isn't he? I want to snipe him from range. I don't want to go down there. Because I'm not suppressed. It's going to make a ton of noise. It's going to draw everyone around. There we go. Check your back immediately. Alright. We're going to keep going. So when I'm doing scav kill quests, if I'm not suppressed, that was the longest stutter I've ever seen in my life. Um, if I'm not suppressed, I'm not going to go down for the bodies. Because it's, it's incredibly dangerous. You essentially just told everyone, hey, I'm here. Come look at me. And then go down to the bodies. Not good. Not good. So I just try to get the quest done. Usually, it's some scavs up here. Huh. Not a single scav, really? Oh. 
Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna check the uh, tank scout spawn. Sounds like some 9 mil cracking off up there. Someone coming down. He's eating or something. Medding. Holy shit. Thank God for armor and bad aim. Oh God, I suck too. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but it's a meme fest, I'll tell you that fucking much. It is 100% a fucking meme fest right now. We're getting the fuck out. I don't know what's going on, but we're leaving. We'll come back if we have to. I'm not fucking around with this right now. That is what you call a complete meme fest. They're getting shot at by someone big, too. Did I drop all my magazine? Oh, my fucking God. All right, so we're going to have to do both of this simultaneously. I don't necessarily want to head directly back there. We'll probably do a wide loop on the left, see what we see. I have no idea what happened down here. If he's gonna kill me, he's gonna peek right from over there and kill me while I'm looting. Yeah, my boy was using a PP-19. This was the guy we heard earlier. I don't know if he's trying to do his pistol quest or something. Alright, we're gonna go around sanitarium. Uh, uh, these stutters are gonna be the, the death of me, I swear to God. I look like a player. It was a bush. Got spooked. This is very fortunate. All right. Ah, oh, that was great. So that's going to wrap up day seven of this Escape from Tarkov Standard Edition playthrough. Now we're going to be continuing the live stream tomorrow. So once again, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified of when that happens. But today was a pretty chill day. We got a couple of quests done, got into some really good fights, got slapped around a bit. And you know, that's just Tarkov. You win some, you lose some. Don't get upset. Learn as much as you can and keep pushing forward. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and learned something about range control and how to disengage when you need to. But that's going to wrap it all up for today, guys. I hope you did enjoy today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.